Here we go. College football is here. Sports bit betting insight today. Tomorrow night, 5 o'clock Pacific on ESPN. Purdue against Northwestern. Northwestern opened two. Then Purdue got up to two and a half and now down to one and a half. The total's 51. And that's based on the quote in a report of the Chicago Sun-Times on Thorson, who got uh, hurt his knee, had to have surgery in the bowl game against Kentucky, that if you watch practice lately, you wouldn't even notice that he had surgery and the kid's been terrific and doesn't show any ill effects of uh, the surgery or that he's limping around. It seems to be, uh, on, although we can't get an official report, it's he's supposed to go, but nothing 100% saying he's going to play yet. Exactly, and that's what the betting markets have reacted to. This line actually was sitting at three and a half for a good portion of the summer, and it looked high. Yeah. It smelled Thank high. You. And, of course, now we've seen that line crash. What's causing the wise guy money on Northwestern? One guy. You know, we're talking Clayton Thorson's not a second-tier talent. He's a guy who started 39 games at the college level already. He's going to go. I don't know if he's going to go day one in the NFL draft next year. He'll go day two if he doesn't go day one. And when you talk about that report from the Chicago Tribune, quote, uh, seven and a half months after getting his right knee reconstructed, the quarterback looked sharp. The injury prompted him to re-examine his mechanics, and some now believe he has more zip on the ball. Thorson, Thorson got heavy reps with the ones at practice, and observers expect him to suit up for the season opener at uh, Purdue. And, of course, uh, it's not just Thorson. He's got his top two wideouts from last year, uh, back Flynn Nagel and Ben uh, Skoranek. Uh, and, of course, uh, it's an offense that, yeah, they lost Justin Jackson, uh, who was a monster running back, but... The sophomore Jeremy Larkin will be just fine filling in his shoes. And, of course, defensively, Northwestern, I mean, the defensive line is the strength uh, of that team. Uh, when you look at the Wildcats on the defense side of the football, Joe Gaziano, he'll be drafted as well. Twelve and a half tackles first loss, four forced fumbles, nine sacks, and 12 QB hurries. He led the team by margin in those last two categories and could be a beast for Purdue's offensive line to deal with. Yep, thanks for the correction. We gave out Northwestern plus three and a half when we did the preview with Rob Vino, and Rob Vino was down on Purdue because, the quotes, Brom not that high on his team, and he's an excellent coach. They were seven and six last year. Uh, big uh, four-win improvement for 2016. They were 117th the previous year on defense. Then they went to 24th last year, a big turnaround there. But reading the local papers, the other day, Brom said they had the worst practice they've ever had. Horrible practice, not good, just a couple days out uh, from the game. So juicy middle if you uh, got to the party early and now have money coming in on Northwestern. And Fitzgerald is an excellent coach. This was a 10-win team last year with Northwestern. Sure, and it was a, a Northwestern team that their offensive line was a disaster for the first portion of the campaign last year. And they kind of put it together over the second half. They've certainly owned this series. You know, Northwestern closed out last year with eight straight wins. Uh, you know, four and zero straight up, three and one against the spread in the last four meetings with Purdue. They won the last four games by an average margin of more than 17 points per game, and that defense has held Purdue to 17 or less in each of those contests. The Wildcats certainly have been good in this point spread role. How about 10 and one against the number uh, on the road against Big 12 foes, a uh, Big 10 foes uh, since the midway point uh, of 2015? And we talked about that Purdue. Defense that went from 117th in scoring defense down to 24th in Nick Holt's first year as defense coordinator. Worth noting that they lost eight guys who saw significant action on defense, including both starting cornerbacks in the offseason. All right, to Friday now. Paulie and Teddy, sports bet, betting inside today, SBR picks, three o'clock Pacific, college, uh, CBS College Sports. Syracuse open one early at the South Point. They got up to six. It's now five and a half and 65 at Western Michigan. Back to back four and eight seasons for Babers. Injuries have been a big problem the last couple of years. They upset, shocked the world, and beat Clemson as a 24 point dog at home last year and also close against NC State and some other close calls. But the big story has been injuries with uh, Babers so far. Yeah, I, I mean, this team's been riddled with injuries in each of Babers' first two years on the job. And that's a big part of the reason why they went four and eight and four and eight last year. They were four and three and then lost their last five uh, after uh, quarterback Dungy uh, got hurt. I mean, you look at Baber's quote, you know, he speaks volumes about what he's expecting. Quote, this is the first time I've ever had a year three anywhere. So this is new ground for me as well. But I think just having a better understanding of what's going on in the conference, 
having a better understanding of the 107 guys in the room, knowing what their hot buttons are, knowing how to push them, knowing which ones to push and which ones not to push, and just having a lot more camaraderie with the family. I think that everybody's headed in the right direction. I think there's more of our type of guys in the room than before, and I think it's going to pay off for us in the long run. You know, I mean, there's certainly some positive signs for Syracuse. They've shown, as you mentioned, they beat Clemson last year. They took NC State and Miami and Florida State all of the wire. Uh, they lost all three. They lost to Middle Tennessee. They had a bunch of losses that they probably shouldn't have had. But Syracuse, one thing that Syracuse is going to do, we know they're going to do. They're going to push the pace. Babers wants to run pace, and that may be a big problem considering Western Michigan's defensive losses. Get back to this one coming up. How things have changed. Huh? There's 10 games Thursday and Friday. All 10 of them are on television, including this one. Uh, follow the, the doubleheader following Syracuse on CBS College Sports. Colorado, Colorado State from Denver. Colorado 7.5, 65.5 the total. Colorado State played Saturday at home and lost as a 17-point favorite outright to Hawaii and gave up 43 points. McDonald carved them up with the run-and-shoot offense. Carter Samuels did throw for 537 yards in that game, but at one point, the 17-point favor trailed 37-7. to Sure, but Colorado head coach Mike McIntyre made it very clear. He doesn't want his team to overlook Colorado State. He doesn't want his team to look past uh, Colorado State. Remember, they've got a big rivalry game with Nebraska uh, uh, next week uh, after this. With Colorado State getting slapped around in that opener, here's a quote from McIntyre. When you dissect the film against Hawaii, they, Colorado State, drastically got better as it went along. In the second half, CSU played really, really, really well. They are dynamic on offense. They have guys that can run everywhere. The quarterback can throw the deep ball really, really well. I was impressed with their fight and their spirit in the second half coming back. And look, I mean, you're right, Carter Samuels, uh, the grad transfer to Washington, making his debut with the Rams. He set a single-game school record with 537 passing yards. Colorado State finished with 653 yards of offense. And, oh, it's worth noting the offense that they faced. The defense got torched. That offense they faced, they didn't have any film on them. It was something brand new that Rolovich had put in for Colorado. It's not like this defense is going to go in and face something that they haven't seen on film before, like what happened last week. All right, one more. This is Friday night, Fox Sports 1, revenge for Stanford. Stanford is 14 and 49 at home against San Diego State. Last year in San Diego, uh, the Aztecs upset Stanford and got the big win at home. And now the, the, no classes, so that's going to be the case the first couple of games. They don't get a lot of fan support to begin with, so keep that in mind in a couple of weeks when they host USC, that the students won't be there as well. And Bryce Love, all the hype, they have finally, they think they found their quarterback with Costello. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, let's talk about last year's meeting because it was a tight game, and here we're talking at a point spread that is a two-touchdown point spread. You know, it is a situation last year where it was tight throughout. San Diego State trailed 17-13, to 13, just under four minutes left in the fourth quarter. All of a sudden, the lights went out at, at the Murph, at Jack Murphy Stadium. There was a delay after the lights finally went back on. San Diego State drove 42 yards and scored in the 11th play of the drive with less than a minute to play to get the victory. Their first win in 60 in 30 in uh, 36 years over a ranked Power Five opponent. Certainly something the Cardinal will remember. That being said, you know San Diego State more than 41 minutes of possession time in that ball game. Rocky Long's game plan was very clear: keep it out of Stanford's hat, hands. 10 first downs for the Cardinal. Only 43 plays from scrimmage for the Cardinal. Only 254 yards for the Cardinal. Of course, Bryce Love was a factor in that because he had two long TD runs, but the rest of the offense didn't do a whole lot. And Costello, who has been inconsistent, I'll just put it that way. Oh, uh, you know, 6'5", junior. I'm not a fan. Well, what do you think of Costello? You're obviously not it's a good. fan. I'm not a fan either. His it's stats good. are okay. Yeah, they are good. Say again? They're, I wouldn't say they're okay. You got 14 touchdowns, four interceptions. He's much better than Chris. You don't agree with that? I think there's hope for Costello. Chris was a little bit of a stiff, no question. He's now a graduate transfer uh, at Tennessee. And, boy, he's got some targets to throw to. <laughs> you know, uh, San Diego State uh, – sorry, uh, Stanford 
besides Bryce Love, has NFL caliber wide receiver talent, NFL caliber tight end talent. That may be uh, a little bit of a problem for San Diego State, but I worry about the defensive front for the Cardinals. There's been, uh, for the Cardinal, I should say, there's been a significant amount of off-season talent drain, and the front four for David Shaw could be a problem in early season play for Stanford. If you uh, do not, you're throwing money away if you bet on Love to win the Heisman. McCaffrey had better numbers than Reggie Bush, and he, I think he had better numbers, uh, challenged Barry Sanders' numbers a couple of years ago. He still didn't get the Heisman. People don't stay up and watch college football on the West Coast. It's a disgrace. If McCaffrey didn't get it, they won't give it to Love. And he had 2,100 yards and 19 touchdowns last year. Had a buck 84 in the game against the Aztecs, a 53 and a 51 yard touchdown run as well. So you're seeing him in some places the favorite, other places, you know, top three odds with Tua uh, to win the Heisman. I think you're throwing your money away if you bet Love to win the Heisman in that one, although he's a hell of a back and could do it all uh, in that one. Like the show? Help us keep the lights on, please. Make sure to comment, share, and subscribe to all the Sportsbook Review videos. Thanks so much. Best of luck. Enjoy the game.